It's a bright and beautiful Monday afternoon here in Vancouver, which means that there are leaf blowers, there are weed whackers, and there are trucks passing by the apartment. If you hear any of this in the audio of the commentary, then I can't really control that. That's my bad. I'll do my best in post to try to remove that, but I can't really guarantee anything. But in this video, what I wanted to do was go over to The Athletic and talk about yet another one of these big trade update off-season primer articles. It's the big one from June 10th, NHL Off-Season Trade Board 2.0, the latest on the Jets, Leafs, Flyers, and more, and how it impacts the market. We've already talked about this article once, at least, in the past, but we're making another video because there's a very specific idea that is mentioned in this piece that I think is absolutely brilliant fodder for the mind. Now, again, as always, link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this article yourself. It's not written by any one particular person. It's written by The Athletic, just by themselves. So it's a big collaborative work. There's a lot of meat in this for off-season trade primer, and what I wanted to do instead of actually screenshotting the article, because we don't do that around these parts, is go over onto the Sunday edition, June 11th, of Spectre's Hockey. What Lyle Richardson does is he summarizes a bunch of points made in this athletic article, and because this is not behind a paywall, I feel comfortable going out there and screenshotting this. But either way, the idea that I wanted to focus on in this video revolves around the Toronto Maple Leafs, Brad Treleving, and William Nylander. Because if we go over to what The Athletic writes about when it comes to Nylander and his contract situation, it's a very interesting parallel that I think you can't even write this stuff. Like, this is just so pure in how it's presented right here. Let's take a look at the Spectres Hockey article and read what The Athletic has to say. Brad Treleving, Toronto Maple Leafs GM, wants to sign William Nylander, whose agent also represents Johnny Gaudreau. Given that history, when Treleving was the Flames GM last year, he won't allow Nylander's situation to play out all year as he did with Gaudreau. And that's a really simple sentence, but is this not the most crazy parallel, the most crazy learning experience, and chance at revenge for a GM? William Nylander is the expiring UFA-to-be, and he's not the only one out there. We know Austin Matthews is there, too, but Nylander is in his own situation as well. Everybody talks about Matthews, but William Nylander is right up there, and he's as important as well. 27 years old, 5'11", 196, right-handed forward, signed till the end of 2024, making $6.9 million a season. Last year, he was over a point per game. 87 points, 82 games played, 40 goals, 47 assists. He also had 10 points in 11 games in the playoffs, and was the only one of the core four to actually show up against Florida and have production. The other guys didn't do that, and so when it comes to Nylander, not only is he the most financially affordable guy out of the top four, at least right now, but he also is in a position where you could say that for parts of the 22-23 season, especially towards the end, he was the better of the four. Not that he's more talented than all of them, but at certain points of the season, he plays better. He shows up. He actually gets points, whereas the other guys completely take the night off. It's a very interesting situation that the Toronto Maple Leafs seem to find themselves exhibiting time in and time out, mostly during the playoffs. But for William Nylander, because he is a valuable piece, you're going to have to re-sign this guy, and he's going to get paid. $6.9 million per season is quite an underpay for a guy that's an over-point-per-game player that shows up when everybody else doesn't, and that is as consistent, fluid, and skilled as Nylander is. And so, for Brad Trilliving to have exhibited this song and dance before is quite marvelous of a parallel when you go out there and explain it like that. Who is William Nylander's agent? I'm going to go out there and Google that right here. William Nylander, agent, not age. I want the agent. So, Louis Gross, there you go. He's a guy that also represents Johnny Gaudreau. And if you take a look at the other agents that he has, I mean, there are some pretty good names here. Saad, Ayafalo, Sandine. But the big two are, of course, Nylander and Gaudreau. And just think, when you frame this entire contract negotiation like this, oh, Brad Trilliving let Johnny Gaudreau go, but he doesn't want to do that with Nylander. He's got the agent, the same agent he's going to have to talk to this summer, or maybe 
throughout the season, I guess, whenever you say you want that extension to be signed. And instead of it being in Calgary, it's now in Toronto, under the biggest hockey spotlight in the world. This kind of feels like the ultimate boss fight, doesn't it? Louis Gross, their agent, is the big bad fee fi fo fum villain in this situation. Not because he's the bad guy, but because he could be the ultimate deterrent to Brad Schrilleving's story once again. If this is not able to go down and William Nylander goes to free agency, twice. That would be twice in a row Brad Schrilleving has fumbled the Lewis Gross UFA to be superstar caliber player. And all we gotta do is go out there and watch, see if this canon event unfolds itself and repeats once more. It's a canon event. Who knows, man? If this actually goes through, if it actually breaks off like it did in Calgary, then we'll see where Nylander ends up going. But just that parallel in and of itself was crazy enough that I'm like, yeah, I want to make a video about that. How wild is that, that you have yourselves the same situation from one team to another with the same agent at the helm of it all? Not to say that William Nylander is going to demand, like, X millions of amounts of dollars and then sign for cheaper in Columbus where nobody was expecting him to go, but William Nylander is so valuable to this team that you could very well say that he deserves a contract that's in that 9 plus, maybe even 10 if you really wanted to stretch it. Like, if you said that Nylander had portions of the season that were better than all the other 10, 11 million dollar guys you have in Toronto, then okay, that argument makes sense. But just considering what other superstar players around the NHL are going for, I mean, Matthew Kachuk's making under 10 million. There are other players that are in that same territory of points and skill that are not making as much as the stars and the Toronto Maple Leafs are. So when you compare it with the other guys on your own team, sure, nine point something million dollars might seem like an underpay in certain situations, but amongst the rest of the NHL, it kind of feels more fair. I don't know, it's all up to the agent, I guess, to determine these numbers and present Tree Living with the evidence to the contrary, why he should be worth more, why he should be worth less, but it really just depends. Either way, you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about Brad Trilliving having to go through this again? From Gaudreau to Nylander, the same agent, from Calgary to Toronto, what are your opinions about this situation unfolding in the way that it has? Links are going to be in the description to the articles that we had looked at, both the athletic piece as well as the Spectre's hockey piece, if you wanted to get your hockey fix in there. Luminary thoughts in the comment section below, I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.